Chapter 111 When Lu Xu returned Li Xiao the $95 change, Li Xiao looked at this teen for a moment and laughed, You're really special. Let's be brothers. After finishing his sentence, he took his stinky tofu and left. Uncle Li was curious, Xiao Xu, is that person really your principal? Uncle Li, you really are curious to ask me this. Lu Xu was troubled as he packed his things and left, yup, he's our principal. Uncle Li stood there in shock as he looked at Lu Xu leaving, this indecent fatty is a principal? What was everyone's impression of a school principal? Some were kind looking, some knowledgeable, or some even looked old and sly. But overall, Everyone's impression of a politician or school principal would be someone who was more serious and stable which took years of discipline to achieve. But this fatty, he's so greedy that one could imagine him stealing a lollipop from a kid. Even a normal person could tell when there's a mismatch. It was like two chemicals being put together which would either become one uniform layer or there would be two separate layers. There might even be an explosion reaction. The truth was that this contradiction started from the money aspect. Employees of the Heavenly Network had to be paid which gave rise to a major problem. Nia Ting suggested that these practitioners were to be paid handsomely. But the rest wasn't happy, so the positions filled by normal people weren't as important. Everyone played a vital role so the treatment should be the same. It was jealousy, why should these people receive a higher pay than us? If their jobs were more dangerous, what about the police and the army? Given the current situation, the policemen are more likely to be killed in the line of duty. Even Ye Ting's rank was suppressed to a secretary level, which was equivalent to a mayor or a director. In the end, the Heavenly Network was placed under the General Staff Second Department and all of its employees were paid based on their ranks. Ye Ting was given the rank of general. The other heavenly kings were colonels while the rest of the ground network held ranks lieutenant colonel, captain, and so on. Second lieutenants in the army normally served as a platoon leader of sorts, but in this case, the second lieutenant did not have much authority but was just paid according to this rank. The amount of pay was just revised in the April of 2009. Platoon leaders equivalent were paid 3,300 while Corps Commander 10200. Deputy Commander 8800, Division Commander 7700, Deputy Division Commander 7000 and Regiment Commander 6000. Although this was much higher than what administration staff was getting, it was still much lesser than those commercial jobs. To say something blunt, the people in the Heavenly Network were not as respected. Nia Ting wasn't satisfied with this, but his report was constantly delayed and even denied. Whenever Nia Ting traveled overseas, he had to be in charge of all the security measure. Although his position was similar to that of a prime minister, would a prime minister need to do this? This was the truth and also one of Nia Ting's greatest worries. When the practitioners started to have expectations for a higher pay and position, how should the Heavenly Network respond? But at least within the management of the Heavenly Network, Nia Ting had full authority. At this point in time, Lu Xu was confused. Whenever this fat heavenly king said something like, I eat Li Xiao, so and so, it would remind him of Sai, Pang Hu, don't pay for my meals, kind of comical vibe. But Lu Xu also felt this person wasn't all that bad and a great heavenly king like him who addresses Lu Xu as a brother in arms, and could also sympathize with the commoners was actually a good thing. Practitioners and metahumans were more and more integrated into the society. In the beginning, many were envious of metahumans living overseas who could make big money but because of the strict regulations, local metahuman criminal activities were also low which, on the other hand, were more apparent overseas. In Europe, refugees turned metahumans were openly protesting against the government which was a huge problem for all its people. In both magical energy scarce and rich eras, the local security was always top class. A beginning of a new day, all the Luocheng International School students experienced a very unusual incident. Their new principal stood at the school gate and greeted every student that walked by, and everyone could still smell a lingering stench of stinky tofu. Numerous students were reminded of Lu Xu by the stench. Not knowing the situation, Lu Xu started receiving distress points, plus one plus three plus two. 
It was the first time students had seen a principal greeting them at the school gates in the early morning, and everyone politely greeted back and some even took a bow as a form of respect. Every time that happened, a huge grin would appear on Li Xiao's face, as though he had never been in such a high position before. When he first approached Nia Ting, a high position was what he wanted. Since he was a class B, they had to at least make him an official or something, right? But Nia Ting was savage, crowning him a heavenly king but not giving him any power. How infuriating! At least he was out of the capital and in charge of this city's ground network and a school. Li Ixiao recognized Lu Xu the moment he stepped into school and smilingly greeted, Good morning my little brother. The students all looked at Lu Xu shockingly, What is this situation and why did he call him brother? Is it a coincidence or they know each other? Speaking of which, how is it appropriate for a principal to address students like that? In the morning, Li Ixiao was brought around by a group of the school's shareholders to observe the school activities. He was having the time of his life. During lunch break, Li Ixiao came to the cafeteria and called the chef, Give me two vegetable and two meat. After taking a mouthful, he pointed bitterly to the shame of you to waste food, sign and told the food supplier and the student affairs director. You've made such disgusting food from the ingredients that our farmers painstakingly grew and still dare to call others shameless. The ex-principal couldn't tolerate this anymore. How could a principal act like that and the cafeteria was a huge source of income for the school, as he said, Principal, do not blame me for my bluntness. Li Ixiao grinned, then don't blame me for my retaliation. This left all the school shareholders speechless. What is this nonsense and are you going to let him speak? Chapter 112 Only then did the shareholders of Luocheng International School find out the true identity of Li Xiaoyi. He was the school's principal, as well as the principal of Daoyuan class, and a practitioner of heavenly king status. In their eyes, heavenly kings were in a class of their own, and they represented the highest class of domestic practitioners. Logically, Li Xiaoyi was more of a military person and shouldn't have been a principal. After all, the two professions were extremely different. But now, it seemed like special times called for special needs. There was definitely no way of overpowering him. So the only option was to cooperate obediently, life was indeed tough. Bumping into such a principal, who knew how many students would graduate this year? All right, you guys reflect on it yourselves. I have more important matters to attend to, said Li Xiao as he left a huge crowd of clueless people in the canteen. Meanwhile, Li Xianyi was guiding Lu Xiaoyu with her learning. To satisfy the girl's growing curiosity for knowledge, the old man had started self-studying secondary school text. At this old age, it was mind-boggling and brain-frying to look at equations and mathematical symbols. The old man would even lament about this at night but he still felt that his hard work would pay off. At least he was on good terms with Lu Xiaoyu now, and she would mostly care about his feelings whenever she spoke. This was a huge improvement. Although he might still get annoyed by her, she was after all still a kid. Li Xianyi could understand and empathize with that. But Li Xianyi had a question occasionally, was Lu Xiaoyu behaving so well only because of the food? While guiding her in the morning, Li Xianyi caught a glimpse of a fatty climbing on the fence outside trying to glance inward. Li Xianyi forced a laugh, you're a heavenly king, can't you behave more like one? As the head of the Golden Foundation, it was impossible to not know the particulars of heavenly kings. Li Xianyi could recognize Li Xiao immediately, and he didn't like him at all. At the start of the year, an ancient remains appeared in Southeast Asia and the Golden Foundation went against this fatty. One of the features of the ancient remains was that they each had a core, which people described as the relic. Once the specific item was obtained by a person, the ancient remains would slowly disappear. So everyone started describing the item as the relic of the remains. And everyone who was researching about the ancient remains had the main motive of obtaining the relic of each site. But once someone reached the site, it was not a given that someone of higher skill level would be able to obtain the relic. The remains were unpredictable and finding it would depend on luck as well. 
At that time, experts from all over the world anticipated the dawn of the ancient remains. The heavenly network, naturally, wouldn't let others get ahead of them. In the end, this fatty went for it and caused all sorts of trouble for everyone. Instead of searching for the relic, he caused plenty of problems for everyone, including the Golden Foundation. Experts from a few other countries even wanted to team up to deal with him, but his trained thick rubbery skin was of a much higher level than other practitioners. Moreover, magical energy back then was weak and no one was willing to hurt their vitality by using skills which required much energy. Which was why no one had any way of dealing with this fatty. At that time, Li Xianyi didn't go due to his health issues. But from the Golden Foundation, he knew Li Yixiao's actions were rather unpleasant. And it was also that time, although Xi Wei and the rest did not obtain the relic, they obtained precious herbs from that area which helped Li Xianyi regain some vitality. Now that Li Xianyi saw the sky, he was fuming which explained his tone. Li Yixiao laughed, I'm just afraid I might disturb you. Visiting without any notice, hope you don't mind? As Li Xianyi looked at Li Ishiao coldly, he suddenly asked Lu Xiaoyu, Xiaoyu, a distant friend is visiting, what's next? Li Xianyi winked at Lu Xiaoyu, who understood his intentions, a distant friend is visiting, always first frustrate his spirit and will, exhaust his muscles and bones, expose him to starvation, rob him of all riches, bring chaos to everything he does. Then ten whips and chase him away. The master said, happiness follows. Li Xianyi took in a breath of cold air. You have so many tricks up your sleeve. You, girl, have a talent for ancient literature. Ten whips and chase him away, Li Xia was caught off guard, I'm uneducated but you don't have to mock me. Lu Xu had already received distress points from Li Xia, plus 666. He sent a message to Lu Xiaoyu at once, is everything all right? Everything's fine. There's a visitor here at the old man's. We're chatting amicably, Lu Xiaoyu replied with her phone, feeling rather suspicious that Lu Xu would ask this all of a sudden. Lu Xu didn't feel well. How could they be chatting amicably? Li Xiao looked at the book on Lu Xiaoyu's hands and could see immediately that Li Xianyi was educating this little girl. He interrogated, is this taught by you? Cough, the question made Li Xianyi feel awkward. He couldn't possibly acknowledge this responsibility and just when he was about to deny it, Lu Xiaoyu interrupted, yes, he taught me. From Li Xianyi's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu took a deep breath. Double kill, was this because Li Xiao was at Li Xianyi's house? Li Xiao turned around and said to Li Xianyi, old man. Last night, the Heavenly Network found two skeletons which could move, run, jump and fight on Beimang Mountain. Their power was equivalent to a Class E strength-based metahuman. He sounded delighted and Li Xianyi raised his eyebrows. He knew what Li Xiao meant. This symbolized that an ancient remain was going to resurface soon and its magical aura had manifested as such. Before the remains open up, there would be strange sightings around the area and these sightings were not fixed. Previously in Southeast Asia, the symptom was the steaming river. And in the ancient site, the heat was immense and weak practitioners dared not get in there. Why are you telling me this? Li Xianyi eyed Li Xiao as he smiled. You don't have any opinion? Li Xiao continued to question. Relax. The Golden Foundation wouldn't meddle in the ancient remains of our country. I'm a man of my word, don't doubt me, Li Xianyi continued to smile. You heavenly network guys can send a few heavenly kings down to me, but why come one at a time? The old man's temper was rather poor when he was younger, and would definitely be annoyed in this circumstance. Li Yixiao knew he couldn't beat Li Xianyi, so he smiled, I'm just asking, don't think too much. Relax, the heavenly network had vowed to get herbs for you. We'll do as we promised, this is a reward for having done so much good for the world. Chapter 113 Do you know about an unidentified Class C practitioner that suddenly appeared in Luocheng? And he even knows swordplay, Li Xiao said as he shot Li Xianyi a look. Li Xianyi replied snappily, why? 
do you think that person is with me? No, no, Li Ishiao smiled, I was just telling you and I doubt this practitioner is specialized in swordplay. The people with you would have displayed some kind of extraordinary swordplay otherwise it would be too embarrassing. Anything else? Li Xiani was annoyed at the sight of Li Ishiao, this fatty was such a nuisance. With no real motives, Li Ishiao did not stay for long. Lu Xu came back and the first thing was to ask Lu Xiaoyu about what happened in the day. When Li Xiani and Li Xiao were talking, they were not wary of Lu Xiaoyu, perhaps thinking that a little girl was no harm and even her brother was just a tier F aptitude. Usually, most people would be too focused on someone or something which would narrow their sight and cause them to miss out on something else. Li Xiao would have never thought that the teenager next door was that class C practitioner they were looking for. Lu Xiaoyu and Lu Xu sat on the sofa and talked for half a day. Lu Xiaoyu carefully avoided the topic of the distant friend visit and reenacted the conversation between Li Yixiao and Li Xiani. Remains What exactly were ancient remains? The most important message Lu Xu got from their conversation was that remains were going to appear in empty Beimeng. And there were cases of energy being leaked from the remains to cause the dead to rise as a skeleton that went around cutting people. Lu Xu really wanted to go there to check it out, but he wasn't stupid. He was sure that the Heavenly Network had dispatched huge manpower to guard the place. If only Lu Xiaoyu still had that little sparrow's soul and she could let it fly around to understand the situation. But since her power could only contain one soul, it definitely wasn't worth it to swap out that class D expert for a sparrow. Even though Lu Xu knew that something big was about to happen in Luo Chang, he couldn't participate. But Lu Xu understood that this was the best decision as if he really went. Three class practitioners may just pin him straight to the ground. He knew his own situation the best and he wasn't a real class C yet. At this moment, Shi Fei suddenly sent a message to the F9 class chat group for all to gather in school. Acknowledge when received. The Daoyuan students were training at this time and replied immediately when they saw the message. Shi Fei then checked for who didn't reply and started to call them. It was already 11 p.m. at night and why the sudden gather? Could it be due to the resurfacing of ancient remains? Northern Mongolian grassland, Nia Ting stood alone on a boundless patch of field with his eyes shut. A cold wind was blowing from north to south and on the post-winter grassland, the rustling by the wind looked as though there were waves. Above the wilderness, Nia Ting's arms were hidden under his cloak and his body's aura was like a ball of flame within the darkness of the night, burning brighter and higher. The wind direction suddenly changed, giving off a dragon-like screech. A man appeared from the darkness in the north and slowly walked over, speaking in Russian, remains belonged to the all of mankind. Perhaps, Nyeting opened his eyes and replied in Russian, I'm here today just to tell you something, don't be nervous. The approaching person frowned, what is it? Those who cross the country border without permission, die, the moment Nyeting spoke. A glim of white light under the reflection of the moonlight appeared from under his black cloak. It was a sword and the moonlight flashed across the carved words on it, saying, Xian Ting. A swing of the sword and the grass patch was sliced apart like an ocean as the grass swayed away from the direction of his swing. What power! Instead of retreating, the approaching person threw a punch, a flame taking the shape of a wolf head flew towards Nye Ting, and behind this person, a huge fire wolf mark appeared which lighted up the whole grassland in the night. But this was only Nye Ting's first swing, and it was already so powerful. The second swing was ground splitting and opened up a huge gap in the ground. Every subsequent swing was getting stronger, and the approaching person's punches were overpowered as he suddenly fled. Nye Ting did not chase after him and stood quietly on the grassland as if he was waiting for something. The black cloak swayed in the wind and the Xian Ting sword was once again hidden as the peace on the grassland was restored, as though nothing had happened besides the 10m long cut in the ground. Class B versus Class B, there would still be a difference. Being the person closest to Class A, Nye Ting stood sentry in the east. Under the northern slope of Mount Everest, a thin and old priest stood in the snow and the strong winds had messed up his hair. 
but he stood there yawning and although he looked like he was about to fall over any time, he never did. The horsetail whisk in his arms was white as snow, and it blended in with this large snow-capped mountain. This old priest seemed to be aloof of any worldly opinions. At this moment, a black spot appeared from the south of Everest. It seemed to have come from Nepal's side and over Everest to the north slope. That person's speed was fast and only started to slow down when he saw the docile-looking priest. Coming face to face, the other party spoke a bunch in a foreign language, as if he did expect that someone would have known about his attempt to enter from the Everest. But the old priest did not seem to understand a word. He said in a soft voice, go back. The other party started babbling again and the old priest annoyingly said, I'm asking you to go back, what nonsense are you saying? A flick of his whisk and the snow which originally slid down Everest was blown back up. By that time, the other party had already fled and a black spot could be seen in a distant, returning towards to north. At this very moment, heavenly kings were dispatched to all sides to guard the country. Although the big fishes couldn't enter, there would still be some leakage, but at least a heavenly king was stationed in Luo Chang. To all the experts in this world, remains were like their lives, and they would act the moment they heard of one. But this was China, not Laos. Chapter 114 Late at night, Luo Cheng International School was still brightly lit and thousands of Daoyuan students had an emergency gathering. Only a few were still uncontactable. Each class teacher did a headcount and a total of 20 rows of students were lined up under a huge searchlight. Lu Xu whispered to Jiang Shuyi, do you know what it is? Remains have surfaced and we responsible for the security, Jiang Shuyi replied seriously. Lu Xu suddenly thought that Jiang Shuyi's serious face was quite cute. Hehe, <laughs> damn this is a guy. Lu Xu asked curiously, do we go inside the remains? Not inside, just around the border. Even a class E like me might not able to protect myself and not to mention class FS, Jiang Shuyi said. That made sense. A part of Dao Yuan class had already obtained superhuman strength and a few hundred pounds were no problem to them. And there were also students with strength second only to Shi Fei and Ko Jiang Shuyi, Lu Li and so on. But they were still only students and didn't have any experience. Shi Fei and Ko's advantage was that they went through proper training and was definitely more accustomed to battles compared to the students. And so, Dao Yuan students were still not up for the real task and asking them to go into the remains was suicidal. Speaking of which, what exactly were these remains? Lu Xu had heard the term remains so many times but still never figured out what exactly remains were. I'm also not sure but I do know that wherever ancient remains resurfaced in the world, it would attract countless experts to come and rob the items inside. There's herbs and spiritual instruments, but the most important thing was something known as the ancient relic. When someone removes the relic, the remains would disappear and this was the most valuable object there, Jiang Shui explained, I heard that a big change is about to happen tonight. Previously, one site of remains resurfaced in the country but it was in the desert and did not attract much commotion. Class BS from outside were stopped at the borders but there were some Class CS and DS that created trouble. Our country managed to obtain the relic in the end and it was rumored to be a sword which is now in the hands of a heavenly king. It's a huge advantage and worth the risking of many lives. Lu Xu was shocked. Class BS were stopped but Class CS and DS weren't? Could it be that Class BS were too big of a target? In reality, the Heavenly Network only had their sights on the various Class BS in other countries and there wasn't enough manpower to target Class CS and DS. Even though these classes were also hard to deal with, but it was their home ground after all and there were Heavenly Kings protecting it. As such, slightly weaker power from outside could provide the practitioners in Heavenly Network to have some training opportunities. There were quite a few experts in the Heavenly Network, but peacetime had lasted a long while so there weren't many veterans. Some practitioners saw blood and bodies for the first time and puked. It was a better option to let everyone gain experience slowly under the protection of Heavenly Kings, rather than to let a group of fresh soldiers onto the battlefield. 
Lu Xu and Jiang Shui were aware of the situation compared to the rest who displayed faces of confusion. At that point in time, Li Yixiao wasn't there and Lu Xu reckoned that he was at the remains. Dao Yuan's students did not have the discipline Shi Fei and company had which was built on the tough daily training they had been through. The rows were chaotic as a group of people was speculating about what happened. Everyone was still wide awake. It would be too pathetic for a practitioner to feel sleepy from a little lack of sleep. What's with the sudden mysterious gathering, could it be to impart us a new training method? I don't think so. Imparting a new training method wouldn't create such a big scene. I think it might be to distribute some standard weapons. A few of them were speculating when someone noticed Lu Xu's sarcastic laughter and went silent. This was Lu Xu's power. But Lu Xu did not plan to let them off yet as he sniggered, I'm really envious of your naive faces which I can't have. I can only rely on arm wrestling the class rep to gain strength. Everyone looked towards Lu Li's directions and felt an impulse to arm wrestle Lu Li straight away. Lu Li was originally quiet and staying out of the discussion when he almost vomited blood. What the f asterisk ck, did I say anything? Did I? What's wrong with you? Where did that come from? Can't you just find someone else to agitate? From Lu Li's distress, plus 388. Those students were no exception and contributed a wave over 1,000 plus distress points. Lu Xu was in a good mood and also grateful for the Daoyuan class contribution of distress points in the middle of the night. At this moment, a class D practitioner who Lu Xu recognized to be one of the pursuers during the fugitive case appeared. He was the one who managed to stab the fugitive in the left shoulder. This person had a manly, chiseled face as he addressed the students, tonight's activity is confidential. Instead of working together, it would be more accurate to call it gaining experience. If anyone was to leak about it, you won't just be expelled but be prepared to face the military court. Everyone looked at each other in dismay. The term military court was normally only heard in television shows and they never expected to hear about it in real life. They understood the seriousness. And Lu Xu had understood that the remains were dangerous and to let everyone witness it would be beneficial for them. Twenty military trucks came down and everyone boarded their respective allocated trucks. Under Lu Xu's calmness was a feeling of anxiety. If what Jiang Shui said about the various metahumans and practitioners from various countries wanting a part of this, then this trip to the remains might not be a peaceful one. Europeans and Americans aside, as it was quite impossible for them to sneak into the mainland, it would be terrible if Asians had sneaked in. The Dao Yuan students were really bold as they excitedly boarded the trucks as if they were going sightseeing. They might as well have brought snacks and kites. This reminded Lu Xu of the time when the teacher in the orphanage brought them to go sightseeing. Chapter 115 Late at night, 20 military trucks advanced towards MT Beimeng. There wasn't much of a nightlife in the small city of Luo Chang, it was mostly just lonely young men and women drinking in small bars. Lu Xu looked at the scenery of the city from the military truck and suddenly felt like the next time he's back might be a long time later. Once they reached MT Beimeng, the place was already cordoned off. Every vehicle that passed by had to go through a thorough examination by a group of strict soldiers. Lu Xu and his group had no idea when this place was cordoned off. Some places on the mountain were lit up, and a huge white searchlight was moving around in search of anything suspicious. There were many soldiers here, and many of them looked ready for battle. They were situated all over the place, but they all faced a general direction. Outwards. As the other students witnessed this scene of armed soldiers, they truly realized the magnitude of the situation. They weren't here for a field trip. And these troops were obviously guarding against something from below the mountain rather than atop. Lu Xu understood that this was an action to prevent random practitioners from coming and stealing the resources of the ancient remains. Despite that, empty Beimang was huge and unless an entire regiment was here, it was rather impossible to secure the perimeters of the entire mountain. But all of these people were professionals and Lu Xu didn't see a need for him to worry about this issue. 
military tents were scattered across a big plot of land on the mountain. Many soldiers were still busy working on the tents and many of them were covered in sweat. There were numerous tents, and there were even temporary toilets constructed. Not far away were a few soldiers cooking, and the rich aroma could be smelled. Lu Xu suddenly felt this seemed like it's going to be a long fight. Tents, toilets, everything seemed to point to the fact that everyone will be staying here for a long time. After the Daoyuan students got off the vehicles, form teachers started assigning tents to everyone. These were the ones which were just pitched by the soldiers, and each class was assigned two tents, with each tent housing about 20 people. It felt like a training camp in the army, but the atmosphere was tenser. After being assigned their tents, the students gathered for their meal. They were so meticulous to prepare food for everyone. Was it because it was late here and they estimated that it's been some time since everyone had their last meal? At this time, Lu Xu noticed a few soldiers waiting by the side after they were done with their work. They didn't speak, but all of them looked towards the car loaded with meals. They were evidently hungry. Dao Yuan class had not done any work, while these soldiers toiled for who knows how long, but the students were given the priority to the meals. This wasn't because of the high status of Dao Yuan class, but the tradition of the soldiers, to always care for the civilians more. When there was food, civilians would eat first, and when there's danger, they would escape first. No matter which unit, they stuck close to this tradition. Dao Yuan students looked at each other while the soldiers stood around, seemingly prepared for a fight which could happen any moment. The students, meanwhile, were preparing to train as they enjoyed the shelter of the tents and the good food. Only at this moment did some students realize that even though practitioners had claimed to want to protect the world and uphold peace, they were the ones who were protected when something really happened. Teacher, we're not hungry. Let them eat first, someone said to Shifei suddenly. Shifei replied calmly, if you guys feel for them, eat quickly and cut the nonsense. They can only eat after you are done. After hearing this, everyone stopped talking and queued quietly for their food. One by one, they got plates to get their food. The food was good, the portion of chicken was huge and it smelled good as well. Lu Xu thanked the chef as he collected his meal, and Lu Li, who was behind him, suddenly blurted, Lu Xu's taste buds are going to get lucky today, the food here is probably much better than his at home. Even amid the tense atmosphere, some people managed to sneak a few giggles. Lu Xu didn't have the mood to care about them now as the soldiers were waiting. He feared he would delay their meal if he caused trouble, so he went to a corner with his plate in his hand. Lu Li and his gang ate not far away from Lu Xu, and a rather fat student started to complain, we don't even have a chair. One of the soldiers heard his words and quickly brought a stool over, a stool which was originally taken by that soldier. After giving the stool away, the soldier sat on the floor, while the remaining troops sat neatly while waiting for the rest of the soldiers still collecting their food. The little fatty whispered, he should have done that a long time ago. Lu Xu, with his plate in his hand, walked over, get up. In this world, you might respect a person, but that person does not necessarily have to respect you. But when someone else respects you, you should try your best to respect that person as well. Nowadays, some youths, being the sole child, have been spoiled and do not know basic courtesy and respect. The little fatty was rather awkward, it's none of your business. Just as he ended his statement, Lu Xu's controlled palm smacked onto this fatty's face. Bam. This slap sounded crisp and loud. How much strength did Lu Xu have now? Even if he controlled his strength, this fatty spun a few rounds out of the stool and was sprawled on the ground, with his food all over his body. That student was giddy and could not get up immediately. Everyone stayed silent and looked at Lu Xu in fear. In reality, this was the first time they had seen Lu Xu being really angry. So, Lu Xu will get angry as well. This student on the floor had trained at least six to seven small cycles. His strength should be that of a few hundred pounds, but he could not even retaliate against Lu Xu. Only then did everyone know that Lu Xu was truly a strength-based metahuman. 
As everyone had not finished training the mysterious senses chapter, or had not learned offensive techniques, no one could match up against Lu Xu in this class. Luli glared at Lu Xu coldly, and Lu Xu stared back calmly. In the end, Luli did not have the courage to sound anything out to Lu Xu. The currently calm Lu Xu seemed to exude the aura of a demon king. His soul imposing manner had suppressed the entire class. Eleven Fei walked over, what's happening? After he understood the situation, he helped the student up. Everyone hurriedly finished their meals and went out once they were done. Through the entire process, no one said anything about this incident. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty Man, we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens To tell us things that we beg to know Like what did the song mean? There's no time